In this lesson, we are talking about the process of translocation. But before we do that, it's better that we review um, the structure of phylum first, right? Uh, though we have already done that in the um, in the previous lessons, so you can have a, a look at those videos also. Otherwise, uh, definitely we are uh, actually discussing it here as well. So when we talk about the phylum, uh, phylum actually consists of these as uh, actually sieve tube elements. So we have these cells here, then you can see they, these are vertically connected to each other, right? So we have sieve tube elements and the companion cells, right? So these these together, they form the phylum, right? So we have these unique tube-like structures that you're look, looking at. So these are actually known as <coughs> sieve tubes, this whole thing, the sieve tube. And then you can see one sieve tube, if you look, uh, this is actually made up of uh, many elongated cells. So you can see this is one cell here, this another cell here. And these uh, these cells, these elongated cells are actually what we call a sieve tube element. Take it. So a sieve tube is made up of many sieve tube elements, which are connected to each other vertically, right? So they make a uh, the continuous vertical uh, column that you see here. Now, each sieve tube element that you're looking at, this is not a dead cell, unlike xylem. When we're talking about xylem, so xylem, you saw that there was no end plate. Okay, there was nothing here that was st uh, stopping the flow of um, water and minerals. Right? So we had this continuous mass flow. But sieve tube, ke andar, what is happening? We have these um, sieve plates. Okay? And uh, these, these actually have these um, like pores in them. Right? So this is uh, the difference between, as you see, a xylem, and uh, then you actually compare that with a phylum. Right? So here in these end walls, you see the end walls are not completely like um, um, yeah, can I say they, they are still there. Okay? They are there, but they have pores in them. Okay? So each sieve tube element has at least one companion cell lying close to it. So you can see ye pura sieve tube. Each sieve tube is made up of sieve tube or sieve elements. Every sieve element has a companion cell lying next to it. Okay? So yahan pe bhi aapko companion cell nazar aa raha hai. Idhar bhi nazar aa raha hai. Okay? So these are all companion cells. Then you can see uh, we have these uh, lateral sieve uh, uh, tubes as well here, which actually connect the companion cell to the sieve uh, tube element, right? So this is a basic structure. And remember, these are not dead cells. So here is another diagram, take it, uh, just for the comparison. So if you look at this as uh, the sieve tube, and then if you look at this one sieve element here, actually, so um, what we notice is here is that there's a sieve plate. So end plates, yeah, end walls are not actually completely destroyed. Okay? So we have these sieve plates, which actually have these sieve pores in them. But what you also notice is that cytoplasm is actually pushed towards the periphery. Okay? It is not completely, feel like if you actually uh, compare that with the companion cell. So they, they are the complete uh, cell that you would actually see in a typical plant cell, right? But here, the cytoplasm is pushed towards the periphery. Then you can see a very few organelles, like we can only see a mitochondria on here and the plasma reticulum. But besides that, you would not find any nucleus here. Tonoplast, definitely there's no vacuole here as well. So tonoplast or ribosome. So these are structures are not uh, found in the sieve elements, right? No, no nucleus, no ribosome. So definitely nucleus is not there. So definitely no protein synthesis has to take place. So there's no need for ribosomes as well, right? But if you look at the companion cell, so it's complete cell. It has all the features that a cell would have, a plant cell would have. So you can see a lot of mitochondria there. And there's a reason as well, because again, um, we will uh, see how uh, this, um, the translocation actually is done uh, through active transport as well. Okay, so you can see a lot of mitochondria there. We'll need ATP. You can see the endoplasmic reticulum, nucleus, vacuole. So you'll see all the features of a cell. Right, and then you can see the companion cell and these uh, sieve elements are again connected to the plasmodesma, plasmodesma, okay? So this is how, we, and this whole structure is actually what we call a phylum, okay? So it's a phylum sieve tube element along with this companion cell. All right then, uh, here we are looking at the, actually uh, what does this phylum sap contain? or what actually is being translocated uh, across the plant. So there's a list of uh, organic compounds as well and inorganic um, uh, minerals as well. But what you need to remember basically is sucrose and amino acids, right? These are the two that you need to focus on. And these are organic compounds that we also um, call as assimilates. Okay? The, the word assimilates is used for them. Assimilates are organic uh, compounds, right? In this case, we have sucrose and amino acids. Then uh, here actually what they've shown you is a comparison between a xylem sap and a phylum sap. Um, just for understanding, see xylem, um, uh, only uh, the mass flow is there only of water and the mineral uh, ions there, right? 
So you will definitely not find any sucrose there. But if you compare them with phloem, so sucrose, like the major component there is sucrose, right? And then look at the amino acids. So these are the two major components that you are going to find in the phloem cell. And these are the two basically that we'll talk about. Or paper, maybe if you're looking, uh, you're writing down the answer. So make sure you use both of them, sucrose and amino acid. Or just please do not write sucrose only, amino acid only. Dono ko ek saath likhenge, you'll get the full credit then, right? Then you can look at the other um, uh, minerals as well. Okay, but please make sure you focus on these two. All right then. So we are talking about phloem. So phloem generally, what it does, it transports organic substances in the plants, right? And what it transports is we have already discussed. It mainly transports the sucrose along with amino acids. So please make sure sucrose plus amino acid. It it, it transports both of these um, around the plant. Okay. Then sieve tube elements. As you are looking at these here, so these are the sieve tube elements. Okay. Elongated cells. Okay. These are living cells. Please make sure you remember that these are not dead cells. Okay. These are living cells. But they do not have any nucleus. They form the tube-like structures for the transport of solutes. And for each uh, sieve uh, tube element, you can see that okay, there are companion cells next to them. So this is a companion cell, and then you can see it has a nucleus, right? So companion cell with the nucleus is there. It will, it will all, it will have all the cellular organelles okay, that are found in a typical plant cell, right? And companion cells carry out all the metabolic activities for the sieve cell, right? So because they have all the components, and then you can see the plasma as matter. Okay, so components will then be transferred to the sieve tube elements. All right, and this is another diagrammatic view. So just have a look, uh, focus on the things, and then we'll move on to the next one. So just uh, you can compare between the phloem <coughs> sieve tube elements and the companion cells and see how they're connected. Okay, then let's talk about the process of translocation now. Uh, when we talk about translocation, uh, please remember translocation uh, simply means that you are literally moving something from one place to another. So it is not just associated with phloem. Okay, it is actually transport. When we talk about transportation, so it can be both from xylem and phloem, right? But commonly, commonly, okay, this is more commonly actually tends to be like described for phloem. Okay. So phloem ke liye hum translocation use karte hai, but remember ki xylem mein bhi ho rahi hai. So it tends to be used more commonly to describe the transport of soluble organic substances within the plant. Okay? So soluble organic substances ki kyunki hum baat kar rahe we are talking about uh, sucrose, we are talking about amino acids, right? Or generally we are talking about these assimilates. Okay? So isiliya is generally translocation ka term wahan pe use ho raha hai. Okay? And translocation ke liye, actually what organic substances are we talking about? The soluble organic substances are actually the substances which are made by the plant itself, like photosynthesis, which sugars bunny, okay? And then like, um, definitely those have to be transported then, okay? So these materials have to be transported, right? And these organic compounds are known as assimilates as well, okay? So translocation is the movement of nutrients around the plant, okay? The term includes the movement of minerals, which can be dissolved in water and transported in the xylem. As we have just said, okay, translocation, does not only uh, occur in um, phloem, okay? but usually refers to the transport of sugars, amino acids, and other organic molecules in the phloem. Okay? So make sure you understand the difference. Then it can occur in either direction in the phloem. So it is bi-directional. Um, when we're talking about xylem, so xylem, it was unidirectional. Okay? It was a passive transport. Um, phloem, when we're talking about translocation, so translocation happens in bi-directional. Okay, wherever the nutrient is required, wherever that organic compound is required, it will move. Okay, so if the roots is required, it will definitely go down. If it is a stem, it will definitely go there, right? Uh, and it is an active process. Okay, so unlike uh, transpiration, transpiration is a passive process, it is unidirectional, but translocation so it is an active process. Okay, it requires energy. Okay, unlike the water transport in the xylem, right? So it's bidirectional and it requires active transport as well. All right then, uh, as we're talking about the phloem translocation, so um, we need to um, actually talk about the transportation of a starch basically. And remember, when we are talking about starch, so remember it is sucrose okay, that is being transported through the sieve tubes of phloem tissue from the source end up to the sink end. So these are the two terms that you need to know. Okay, that source actually is the place where starch or sucrose actually is going to move. Okay, where it's storage. 
and sink is the place where it is actually going to be consumed or utilized. Okay, so you need to know what is the source end and what is the sink end. Okay, and remember these are not fixed, right? So this occurs in both directions. The two ends of the phylum translocation are as follows: so source end at the sink end. Okay, source end ki jab hum baat karte hain, generally zain mein aa sakte hain ki yes, it can be the leaf, jab photosynthesis ho rahi hai, but remember it cannot always be the case. Okay, now for example, if it's a tuber, okay, or a starch ki form mein wahan pe um, definitely store hua hai. and when that starch uh, aerobic cellular respiration ke liye you need glucose the plant needs glucose basically that the starch has to be broken down theek hai starch broken down over into maltose and maltose into glucose that glucose is actually being used in the aerobic cellular respiration to us case mein wahan pe jo storage site hai starch ki that is actually the source end theek hai so remember it is not always ke leaf will be the source end theek hai so source end ke is the location in the plant where the sugar is being produced either by photosynthesis or by breaking down of a storage ठीक है सो रिमेंबर इट इज इधर द साइट ऑफ प्रोडक्शन व्हिच डेफिनेटली इज अ लीफ जब फोटोसिंथेसिस के थ्रू बन रहे और इट कैन बी द ब्रेकिंग डाउन ऑफ द स्टोरेज स्टार सो बोथ ऑफ दीस कैन सर्व एज द सोर्स एंड ठीक है सिंक एंड क्या है इट इज अ लोकेशन इन द प्लांट वेयर द शुगर इज बीइंग स्टोर्ड और कंज्यूम ठीक है स्टोर भी जब हो रहा है तो एक एक टाइम होगा कि डेफिनेटली अगर ज्यादा सुक्रोज है या ग्लूकोस है इवेंचुअली इट हैज टू बी स्टोर्ड समवेयर तो ठीक है जब तक वो स्टोर हो रहा है या व्हाटएवर यू आर स्टोरिंग इट एक्चुअली इज अ सिंक एंड ठीक है Or it is definitely consumed is the sugar sink. So remember, source and a sink and, okay, yeah, depending on the situation, okay, will be different. All right then. So uh, let's uh, go to the examples of what can be a source, what can be a sink, right? So uh, sources when we talk about uh, the sources actually, these provides assimilates and assimilates as we talk about. कि हमें दो चीजें याद रखनी है सुक्रोज प्लस अमीनो एसिड, ठीक है? So these provides assimilates to the plant from reactions, ठीक है? or storage for transport ठीक है um then uh, so what can be the sources so definitely green leaves and stems ठीक है आपको पता है green leaves photosynthesis हो रही है so definitely the site for uh, the source and ठीक है as well as the storage organs the storage organs क्या हो सकते हैं the tubers the root taps ठीक है या food is stored in the seed seed के अंदर भी basically um, जब endosperm के अंदर starch की form में है so that is actually the source so sucrose makes up 20 to 30 percent of the phloem sap right Okay, if you look at the sink, so sink they use the assimilates from the plant in various processes. Okay, so कौन कौन से प्रोसेस कौन कौन से जगह हैं जहाँ पे different processes के लिए ये use हो रही होंगी सुक्रोज. So that can be the growing roots. Definitely growth के लिए they need energy, they need glucose definitely. Okay, so cellular respiration होंगी, metabolic reactions होंगे वहाँ पे. Active processes in the roots and the stems. Meristem cells definitely they are growing and dividing. developing stores as well like seeds fruits or storage organs jaise jaise fruit develop bhi ho raha hai to eventually it has to grow to a certain size so by the time it is growing to so definitely the sink at that time wo nutrients ko absorb karega apne andar store karega theek hai to jab tak wo complete fruit nahi banta it is definitely a sink right so just, just remember that you know what are the sources what are the sinks all right then another thing that you have to um um like understand here is actually the process of phloem loading and unloading basically theek okay? hai so as we are talking about ke yes sucrose actually is uh, transported sucrose and amino acids theek okay? hai and right now we are talking about sucrose right now so sucrose actually from the site of production or from the source and it has to be loaded into the phloem and then from phloem it will be actually be transported to different parts of the plant wherever it is required okay so as the sucrose is actually being uh, sent into the phloem so the process will be known as phloem loading okay or similarly this sucrose uh, as it goes to uh, to the different parts of the plant let's say it is going towards the root okay wherever it is required ab wahan se when the sucrose is actually going to go into the root so tab hum uske liye term use karenge phloem unloading okay so we use these terms phloem loading and phloem unloading so translocation yes we know is a vital process definitely um, plants okay for survival they need these uh, um nutrients they need the assimilates organic compounds they need them right so if you talk about a large tree it can move up to 250 kg of sucrose around its trunk in a year so this much sucrose is transported across around it its trunk in a year in a large tree we are talking about right so assimilates are moved into the phloem by active processes right so energy is required for that so there are two roots ठीक है एसिमिलेट्स आर मूव्ड इनटू द फिलोम ठीक है सो दीस आर द सिंप्लास्ट रूट एंड द एपोप्लास्ट रूट सो वी हैव ऑलरेडी टॉक्ड अबाउट 
के विच लाइक व्हाट डज सिंप्लास्ट रूट एंड व्हाट डज एपोप्लास्ट रूट मीन वी हैव टॉक्ड अबाउट दिस इन द जाइलम वी वर स्टडीइंग जाइलम एज़ वेल और एक्चुअली ट्रांसपोर्ट ऑफ वाटर की जब हम बात कर रहे थे बट रिमेंबर बेसिकली एपोप्लास्ट इज एक्चुअली द मूवमेंट अक्रॉस द सेल मेम्ब्रेन सॉरी सेल वॉल सॉरी सॉरी फॉर दैट सो द मूवमेंट अक्रॉस द सेल वॉल ठीक है और दिस मूवमेंट ऑफ दीज ऑर्गेनिक कंपाउंड्स दैट असिमिलेट्स थ्रू द सेल वॉल ठीक है, so that is apoplast or symplast क्या है, the movement of these assimilates through the cytoplasm, ठीक है, so these are two roots that can be used by the plants, ठीक है, for uh, the purpose of translocation, symplast root and the apoplast root, right? So when we talk about the symplast root, uh, symplast root generally most of it is a passive process, ठीक है, so one reason of that is, uh, it is that कि yes uh, that assimilates are trans uh, moving across the cytoplasm. But then one cells are connected to each other through plasma desmata. Okay, so they will actually they can be transported from cytoplasm of one cell to the cytoplasm of the next. So assimilates. Okay, generally uh, they are actually stored in the vacuoles of the cell. Okay, and these assimilates are moved through the cytoplasm of the mesophyll cells into the sieve tubes across the connecting plasma desmata. Okay, so if you look at this diagram here, okay, so you can see that uh, these, these connecting plasma desmata. तो इसके थ्रू व्हेन दे आर मूविंग ठीक है फ्रॉम साइटोप्लाज्म टू दिस तो ये एक कहलाएगा आपका सिंप्लास पाथवे ठीक है सो दैट इज अ सिंप्लास पाथवे सो दे मूव टू द साइटोप्लाज्म मीसोफिल सेल्स इनटू द सीव ट्यूब्स अक्रॉस द कनेक्टिंग प्लाज्मा डेसमेटा सो दिस जनरली इज अ पैसिव प्रोसेस एसिमिलेट्स आर मूव्ड बाय चेंजेस इन द वाटर पोटेंशियल ऑफ द सेल ठीक है सो दिस इज अ सिंप्लास पाथवे और सिंप्लास रूट एंड दिस इज जनरली पैसिव एपोप्लास पाथवे हाउएवर रिक्वायर्स एक्टिव ट्रांसपोर्ट्स अगेन Uh, one way you can remember is that because apoplast A se shuru ho raha hai, so it involves active transport. Okay, so this is a difference between symplast and um, apoplast pathway as well. Um, what is happening in apoplast pathway? Assimilates, diffuse through the cell wall, and the intermembrane spaces. Okay, apoplast ke through guzar rahe assimilates. Okay, ab what is happening? Ab says let's say that there is a source and let's say here a leaf is. Okay, the food was actually made in the leaf. ठीक है नॉ इट हैज बी ट्रांसपोर्टेड बट अब जो पाथवे होगा तो फ्रॉम द सोर्स फर्स्ट इट विल हैव टू गो इन टू द कंपेनियन सेल ठीक है अब कंपेनियन सेल में व्हेन इट इज एंटरिंग तो इट देयर वी एक्चुअली रिक्वायर द एपोप्लास्ट रूट डेफिनेटली सो व्हेन दीस एसिमिलेट्स रीच द कंपेनियन सेल्स दे आर एक्टिवली ट्रांसपोर्टेड अक्रॉस द मेम्ब्रेन इनटू द सीव सेल साइटोप्लाज्म ठीक है हाउ इट इज हैपनिंग ठीक है सो जब वो कंपेनियन सेल्स में जाते हैं ठीक है सो देर एक्टिवली ट्रांसपोर्टेड अक्रॉस द मेम्ब्रेन इन टू दीफ सेल साइटोप्लाजम सो लेट सी हाउट इज हैपनिंग सो यू विल हैव टू फोकस ऑन द कंपेनियन सेल्स एट द मोमेंट हेयर ठीक है रिमेंबर डिस्कसिंग द स्ट्रक्चर एज वेल सो के दीज सेल्स हैव अ लॉट ऑफ माइट्रोकॉन्ड्रियन डेम एज वेल ठीक है सो वी नीड अ लॉट ऑफ ए टी पी टू एक्टिव ट्रांसपोर्ट विल डेफिनेटली टेक प्लेस हेयर so let's see how is this happening so if you focus on this diagram here see what is happening see this is the source let's say a leaf cell where photosynthesis hap is happened and definitely sucrose is formed uh, what is happening sucrose cannot enter the companion cell directly theek okay. hai so um what is happening theek okay. hai one thing we notice ek cheez ho sakti hai we we saw ke simplast pathway is also uh, going to take place theek okay. hai Which is largely passive process. Okay, chalo, so sucrose enters the plasma desmata, then uh, through the companion cell it, it enters the phylum um, cell element. Okay, but right now we are talking about the apoplast pathway. So for the apoplast pathway, what happens is that they, we have these uh, hydrogen pumps here along the um, cell wall. Okay, um, cell membrane. In fact, in the cell, uh, companion cell, so the this hydrogen actually is pumped actively. uh from the companion cell into its cell wall theek okay. hai so it is actually pumped out of the cell right into the cell wall uh, what is happening in the cell wall uh, the ph actually becomes low and then the concentration of hydrogen ions actually increases here uh, what happens because of this because now there's a like concentration gradient um, there's more hydrogen ion there so they will definitely um, enter the cell again but what they do now now they actually act as co-transporters and they will bring in sucrose along with them right so right now we are talk talking about the apoplastic pathway so the active hydrogen pumps so which which you are looking at here they are driven by the atp pumps 
So hydrogen ions are pumped out of the companion cell into the cell wall. And remember, we're talking about the apoplastic pathway. Okay, so they will be pumped. They will definitely cross the cell surface membrane. They will come here into the cell wall. Okay, it's following the apoplastic pathway. Uh, what is happening after that? This creates a high concentration gradient of hydrogen ions in this wall. Now hydrogen ions sucrose. Now there is a pump here, okay, which uh, this is a hydrogen ion sucrose pump. Right, so as the hydrogen ions are moving inside the uh, companion cells again, okay, so through this carrier protein, what will happen? They will bring along sucrose as well. Okay. So this is this is what we call as like so active transport actually happened here. This hydrogen was being sent from the companion cell to the cell wall, right? But then it enters as a code uh, enters like it through the carrier protein. Okay, it enters the cell along with uh, sucrose, right? So this is the apoplastic pathway. Okay, and this is what we call as the phloem loading. So sucrose. Okay, now it has come into the companion cell. Now, from the companion cell through the plasmodes matter, it can go into the phloem sea valley membrane, right? So this is the, the the pathway that is followed. Then here in this case, as sucrose enters, so definitely what is happening because of that? Okay, up now the like uh, solid potential is more in this case. What will happen? We we definitely have xylem next to it. So what will happen because of that? Water will flow in because of osmosis because now there is more solid potential. Water potential becomes low, so water flows in by osmosis. Right, so because of that, what happens? This increases the pressure. Now, so pressure-driven mass flow of water and solute takes place. Then, okay, so it can then flow, okay, towards the root if it is required there. Okay, so this is how it actually happens. So have a close look at the diagram one more time, try to understand it, and then we'll move on to the next part. This is another diagram that is showing you okay, how hydrogen is actually sent uh, actively through this proton pump outside the cell. It creates a high uh, proton gradient there, right? And because of that, it enters through the co-transporter, which is a carrier protein, but it brings along sucrose along with it as well. Okay? And then the sucrose from the companion cell can then uh, go into the sieve tube element okay, through the plasmodes meta. Okay? As sucrose actually enters, so this actually brings along water as well through osmosis, okay, and the pressure-driven mass flow of water solutes takes place. So this is the process of phloem loading. Okay, this is another view. So here you can look at both the apoplast pathway and the symplast pathway. So if you follow the symplast pathway, so this is the mesophyll cell. So you can see that sucrose definitely formed here, but it will move from because symplast pathway involves the movement. Uh, of these assemblies to the cytoplasm. So they will move from the plasmodes meta of um, one cell to the next. And then you see, okay, we have these um, phloem parenchyma, then comes the companion cells, and then comes the sieve tube element, right? So they will follow the, through the cytoplasm into the plasmodes meta, and they will actually load here. And if you look at the apoplast root, apoplast actually involves active transport. So see here, as the sucrose is actually um, being transported through this um, phloem parenchyma cell. So now you see, okay, because it has to follow the apoplast pathway. So in this case, now hydrogen will be sent out of the companion cell into the cell wall, and now it will enter the cell again uh, through co-transporter, but bring in sucrose along with it as well, right? And after that, Right, that sucrose can then again go inside the, to the plasmodes matter, right? Or it could follow this route, right? So this is how the apoplast rule will actually be involved in active transport of uh, sucrose in the phloem. So have a close look at the diagram, try to understand it. Okay, so the mechanism of phloem cell translocation. So let's um, review. So the starch, which is a main photosynthetic product, is transported in the form of sucrose as an aqueous solution because sucrose is soluble and moderately inactive than glucose. This takes place through the sieve tubes at the source, and sucrose is actively loaded into the sieve tubes through the transfer cells. This is known as phloem loading. This increases the 
solute potential of the sieve tubes decreases the water potential. Then water enters the sieve tubes by endosmosis from the xylem vessels. This builds up a high hydrostatic pressure in the sieve tubes at the source end. At the storage organ, sucrose is actively unloaded into the storage tissues to the transfer cells. This is known as phylum unloading. Uh, because of that, what is happening? The solute potential becomes less and the water potential becomes high. Right, right now we are talking what is that happening at the sink end, right? So this lowers the solute potential, increases the water potential. Uh, because of increased water potential, water will move out. It will leave the sieve tube by exosmosis and it will enter the xylem tissue. This builds up a low hydrostatic pressure in the sieve tube at the sink end. Okay, due to this, a hydrostatic pressure gradient from the source end to the sink end along the sieve tubes is created. And then you know okay, how it will flow from the high uh, water potential to the area of low pressure, water potential gradient, right? Then the phylum sap is transported to the sink end up to the source end by mass phylum. Okay, because right now what is happening? Hydrostatic pressure up niche zada ho gaya. Kyunki ab haan se solutes chale gaya hai up sink mein, which can be the root, let's say. Hydrostatic pressure is zada ho gaya aur upar kam hai. Ab what will happen? This phylum sap is transported okay, to the sink end up to the source end by mass phylum. Okay, this mechanism is known as pressure phylum hypothesis. Okay. So due to this hydrostatic pressure is uh, actually generated from the source end to the sink end, right, along the sieve tubes. And then the phylum sap is transported to the sink end. And this actually uh, is known as a pressure phylum hypothesis. So here you can have a look at the diagram as well. How is this phylum loading and unloading taking place? So you can see this is the actually leaves where photosynthesis is taking place. So this is the source. So carbon dioxide plus water, okay, you get sucrose water. Uh, what is happening now, now here, the concentration is more. So eventually they will be loaded in the sieve tube through the companion cells, right? So the, here you can see the phylum, uh, the phylum loading, okay? Then definitely because of this, uh, the solute potential would increase here. As the solute potential increases, water will flow in from the xylem. Okay, this will uh, create a hydrostatic pressure. So water will, uh, this sucrose or uh, these, these assimilates will move in as a bulk flow. Okay, they will go down to the sink. Okay, then definitely at this place, they will be unloaded. Okay, as the sucrose is unloaded, so this decreases the uh, solid potential here. Okay, and, uh, but what happens because of this water potential becomes higher, right? And then uh, as water potential becomes higher, so water can uh, go to the xylem as well, as well as it can follow sucrose here because now the solid potential is more here. Now the sucrose, which has actually uh, been unloaded, it can then convert into glucose, fructose, right? And then this glucose can then, if it has to be store, stored, it will convert into starch. If it has to be used by the, the plant cells, it will convert into cellulose. Or if it is used in anaerobic cellular respiration, so it can definitely um, uh, produce carbon dioxide and water, right? So this is the whole uh, diagram that is showing you the sources, the things, and how mass flow is taking place in the film. So you can actually uh, have a look at the diagram, pause the video. Okay, so if you're talking about the mass flow hypothesis, so this is just a recap, right? So in the mass flow hypothesis, we know there are two ends. We have the source end and we have the sink end. So if you look at this diagram, so they've shown you the source cell, which is the leaf. And this is a sink end, which is a root, right? So the loading of the solutes from the companion cells. So these are the companion cells, okay? It will take place at the source end, right? So as they actually um, enter here, they, this will reduce the water potential inside the sieve tube. What will happen because of that? Uh, since solid potential is more, water potential is less. So you can see water will actually move in from the xylem, okay? And because of diffusion and what will happen now, this solution will actually move uh, uh, towards the sink as a mass flow or as a bulk flow. And now these solids will be unloaded, okay? Uh, from the sea cells to the companion cells to get the sink. So you can see here, then what will happen? Um, here in this case, what is happening then, uh, water potential will definitely uh, increase here because now the solutes have been unloaded and now this uh, water will actually 
to osmosis will go back to the xylem, right? And this is how the, this is actually the mass flow hypothesis. So this is another version. So you can actually um, use these for your notes. How do sugars move along the phylum? So see what is happening. Number one, sucrose is actively loaded in the sieve tube element, reduces the water potential. Water flows in by osmosis, increases the hydrostatic pressure in the sieve tube element. Then it moves down the sieve tube from high hydrostatic pressure to the, at the source to the low hydrostatic pressure of the sink. The sucrose is removed from the sieve tube by surrounding cells, increases the water potential in the sieve tube and then water moves out of the sieve tube to decide the static pressure. Right? So you can use these points for your notes. Right? Now, since we are talking about, okay, these are hypotheses actually, right? So um, when we talk about these um, translocation or uh, movement of these um, assimilates uh, across the plant, so there are a few uh, supporting evidences, okay, and definitely, there are things which are objections, which are objecting this whole theory. So what are the evidences which are supporting okay, the mass flow? So um, they're saying okay, when this ring of bark from a woody stem is removed, so remember the bark, jo, uh, because xylem is inside and phylum is outside, the bark is a tree key that includes phylum. Okay? Um, the actually the area where this translocation is taking place. So if you remove the bark, a tree was missing you from a portion, you actually remove a ring. Okay? So a bulge is formed above the ring. Okay? Us ring ke upar, jahan sab ring remove, he, a, bulk, a bulge is formed there. So a high concentration of sugars is found within that within the fluid from the bulge. Okay? So below that ring, jahan sab ring pura remove kiya hai, above that ring, you will see a bulge which contains these uh, um, the sugars there. So high concentration of sugars will be there. But below the ring, Okay, this will not be the case. So this indicates a downward flow of sugar. So when we say okay, from the source, let's say leaves up the source, okay, through, it is going down, or let's say it has to go towards the roots. So what will happen if you trees a bark remove kar di, so because it is traveling down, so ab wo flow pe hai nahi, how would it travel? So wo usi pe, us bark ke upar, tak flow mein hai, wahan tak ja ke wo, uh, deposit ho jayega. So if you look at this diagram here. So here, what they have shown you, you know, they removed the phylum, which was the bark, okay? but here it is now xylem. Okay? So ye karne ke baad, over a period of time, what will you see? That a bulge actually forms above this the ring that you have removed here. So uh, since the source ends, it definitely because it has to go to the sink end, now here it starts to accumulate. Okay? And if we see that this area contains very high concentration of sugar there. So this is when evidence that supports that phylum actually is involved in translocation. Okay, so this is one um, evidence that actually supports this idea. Okay, secondly, um, uh, what other evidences uh, are supporting this idea is that the movement of organic substances which takes place in the plant could be tracked using a radioactive tracer. So radioactive tracers can be generally like they use these um, carbons. So again, they can use these. Then aphids are insects, they could be used to investigate the pressure in the phylum. So uh, what do aphids do? Okay, if they're actually like, um, um, they're feeding on the phylum. Okay, so or then actually if we see the fluid that is collected from the aphid and you analyze that, so it contains many sugars. Okay, so this is also like uh, just to see okay, how phylum is actually involved in uh, translocation. Right, so it is collecting the fluid from the phylum. Okay, and this fluid actually if you analyze that, because see, you can see okay, this is a sieve tube. Right, so this is an uh, supporting um, evidence. Then they're saying when a metabolic inhibitor was placed inside the phylum, translocation was halted. So metabolic inhibitor, but remember as we were talking about, okay, this translocation is actually uh, actually an active transport, especially when we're apoplast pathway. Ki baat kar rahe. So when a metabolic inhibitor was placed there, okay, so um, the translocation was halted. So as we are saying, okay, it is an active transport. So yeah, also uh, like suggests that okay, since we're saying active transport is involved, so we are true in uh, saying that, okay? So these are a few evidences, okay, which are supporting actually the idea of this mass flow across the phylum, okay? The objections jo hai, wo ye hai ki they're saying that sugar not just travels to the sink with the highest potential, but to many different things. Ab sink ek to hai. It's not just the root. Agar ap, for example, you take the example of this tree, 
तो जरूरी तो नहीं है कि खाली रूट्स पे ही जा रहा हो इसमें ग्रोइंग ब्रांचेस होंगी ग्रोइंग लीव्स होंगे ठीक है सो वहां पे भी तो सिंक है um, तो दिस इज व्हाट दे सेइंग के शुगर इज नॉट जस्ट ट्रैवल टू द सिंक ठीक है बट दे गो टू मेनी डिफरेंट सिंक्स एज वेल देन अ बैरियर वुड बी क्रिएटेड बाय द सीफ प्लेस टू ऑब्स्ट्रक्ट मास मास फ्लो ठीक है फॉर एग्जांपल अगर सीफ प्लेट्स के अंदर आप बैरियर्स लगा दें वहां पे ठीक है सो मास फ्लो सो ऑब्स्ट्रक्ट हो सकता है ठीक है सो दीस आर जस्ट एक्चुअली व्हाट दे हैव try to look for kg these are the objections so have a look at that so looking at the evidence there is still a lot of research okay so they have actually uh, like through microscopy um, they have seen that there are adaptations of companion cells for active transport if the mitochondria of the companion cells are poisoned translocation stops so these are a few very selective with the supportive evidence they have seen the flow of sugar in the phloem is about 10000 times faster than it would be by diffusion alone suggesting an active process is, uh, is also involved efforts can be used to demonstrate the translocation of organic solids in the phloem using evidence from the efed studies it has been shown that there is a positive pressure in the phloem that forces the sap out through the stylet the pressure and therefore the flow rate in the phloem is lower closer to the sink than it is near the source ठीक है, the concentration of sucrose in the phloem sap is also higher near to the source than near the sink. So again, efforts में कि अगर वो sink end पे कर रहे होंगे तो definitely concentration of phloem sap would be less there. ठीक है, definitely अगर वो source end की तरफ है तो you can definitely analyze. ठीक है, so जो वही objections की जब हम बात करते हैं, some questions remain. Not all solids in the phloem move at the same rate. On the other hand, sucrose always seems to move at the same rate regardless of the concentration of the sink. and no one is yet completely sure about the role of the sieve plates in the process right so these are again a few evidences so with that we have covered the process of translocation as well um but uh, i would like you to actually have a look at an immediate video where they are showing you both the process of transpiration and translocation and uh, then we'll move on to the next topic with you in order for a tree to carry out photosynthesis and maintain its overall health Water and nutrients need to move throughout the entire tree even against gravity. How does a plant manage this without an organ like a heart that pumps fluids? As we will see, water is pulled from the roots to the leaves through a process called transpiration. In addition, water potential drives the movement of water from one area of the plant to another using osmosis, gravity, and the surface tension of water. Transpiration begins in the leaves. The arrangement of cells and structures in the leaf facilitate the movement of gases and water into and out of the leaf. A leaf contains several layers of specialized cells. The upper epidermis is one cell layer thick and provides a protective covering. Below that layer is mesophyll tissue. Cells in the palisade mesophyll layer are sites for photosynthesis and secretion. as well as storage of food and water the spongy mesophyll layer contains a looser arrangement of cells where spaces between cells aid in gas exchange and the passage of water vapor from the leaves throughout the lower epidermal tissue are stomata which are microscopic openings flanked by guard cells gases pass into and out of the leaf through these openings as well as water vapor evaporating from the leaf a process known as transpiration the spongy mesophyll layer contains arrangements of vascular tissue consisting of xylem and phloem that are specialized for the transport of water and nutrients throughout the plant the vascular tissue extends from the leaves through the stem to the roots water is transported in xylem from the roots where the water potential is higher up to the leaves where the water potential is lower The arrangement of the tissues, the functions of the cells, and water potential determine the direction in which water will move through a plant. Water passes out of the leaf as water vapor through the stomata. The water vapor lost from the leaves is replaced with water that enters through the roots and is brought up through the stem in xylem. Xylem is composed of vessels which are continuous tubes formed from dead hollow cylindrical cells. arranged end to end and tracheids which are dead cells that taper as the ends overlap this arrangement 
and the polar nature of water molecules allow water to pass in an unbroken stream through the xylem, from the roots, up through the shoot, and into the leaves. Adhesion is the attraction of water molecules to a surface, such as the wall of the xylem. Cohesion is hydrogen bonding between water molecules. Together, adhesion and cohesion allow water to move through the xylem in a continuous stream, from the roots up through the stem to replace water lost from the leaves through the stomata. Water enters the plant through the epidermal cells of the roots and travels into the xylem. Water potential in the cells of the roots increases when symporter pumps in the plasma membrane allow protons to pass into the cell, traveling down their concentration gradient. These pumps couple the transport of protons with the transport of minerals and other solutes into the cell. Water follows into the cell, driven by osmosis. The presence of aquaporin channels in the membrane enhances osmosis, allowing bulk flow of water from the soil into the roots. The other main vascular tissue is phloem. Phloem transports carbohydrates and amino acids that are produced in the leaves to cells in the roots and stems where they are used and stored. Conduction in phloem is carried out through two kinds of elongated cells, sieve cells and sieve tube members. Most angiosperms contain sieve tube members. Both types of cells have clusters of pores known as sieve areas that are abundant on the overlapping ends of cells. These structures aid in the movement of carbohydrates, like sucrose, that are manufactured in the leaves and carried in the phloem throughout the plant a process called translocation. Turgor pressure increases in the sieve tube members as sucrose from surrounding cells is brought into phloem through active transport. Water then enters phloem from xylem by osmosis, which drives the transport of carbohydrates in the phloem. Water movement in vessels is one way, while transport in sieve tube members can go in both directions. Water potential is an important driver in both xylem and phloem transport, but only phloem transport utilizes both active and passive transport. Our heart pumps blood throughout our bodies to provide nutrients and water to our cells. Vascular plants can accomplish this same feat without a heart, using transpiration, water potential, and translocation to move water, nutrients, and minerals to all cells of the plant. So this is the last part um, of this chapter where we have to uh, exclusively talk about zeophytes mainly, uh, but it's better that you also know about other type of plants. So uh, mesophytes are the plants which are able to take up sufficient water to replace transpiration, right? So this is most of the plants actually are mesophytes, right? Hydrophytes are the plants which live either partially or completely submerged in water, right? And these here, actually there is problem with oxygen uptake. While xerophytes live in areas where water loss while transpiration is greater than water uh, which is actually taken up by the roots, right? So here we are uh, particularly talking about the xerophytes. So xerophytes are generally uh, known as dry, because zero means dry and phytes definitely for plants. So these are the plants with the structural and physiological adaptations that enable them to survive in hot and dry conditions. So when water is abundant, the rate of transpiration is about the same as any other plant, but uh, during a uh, drought and uh, prolonged uh, cases where actually uh, there is a shortage of water, so they definitely have some adaptations which make them successful, right? So um, generally, if we talk about plants, plants are designed to prevent water loss. Take it, because we know that they have these um, vaccine cuticle, Okay, they, they would try to prevent water loss, right? So they would have vexy cuticle. Okay, they would have a stomata on the underside of the leaf. Definitely there's a reason. If you have the surface on the more water would be water would be evaporated, right? And then stomata, they, are, they remain closed at night. So it, they are designed to prevent water loss. Okay, or deciduous plants, they lose um, leaves in the winter. So leaves nahi hai, so you can think about stomata nahi hai, so definitely water loss comes. So these are different uh, like mechanisms that plants actually or adaptations that they have to prevent water loss. So they can, they have vexy cuticles, the stomata on the underside of the leaf. They remain closed at night, the stomata, then deciduous plants lose leaves in the winter. 
All right then. Um, let's talk about since we're talking about these um, adaptations. So the first um, that we'll talk about is the reduced surface area to volume ratio, right? So the plants, uh, since we're talking about zero fights right now, so these plants will have thick leaves rather than thin, broad leaves. Okay. So thick leaves, so you can imagine. Okay. Take a surface area definitely thinner leaves because surface area is at the So they will have thick leaves rather than thin, broad leaves. Some will have modified leaves, which are spiny. Okay. They, they also protect the plant from a small mammals, which would otherwise remove the water from the plant. So again, some adaptations by these zerophytes. Thick leaves rather than thin leaves. Some leaves are modified into spines, okay? and they protect the plant from mammals because they would remove water from the plant, right? Now, when we talk about the thick, uh, thick vaxi cuticle, so this vaxi layer that covers the epidermis, it may be uh, thick to ensure that virtually no water can escape through it, right? Some plants also have thicker epidermis, okay? so it's this vaxi cuticle layer, uh, okay? it, is, it covers the epidermis, then the epidermis itself can be thicker as well, right? Then talking about the hair and the spike. So what these do, these hair and spike, they trap a layer of still air between the hair, okay? Which increases the thickness of the uppermost layer, okay? Because this uppermost layer, which is the epidermis, okay? I must upper hair or spike hai. They are actually going to trap air as well. Ab epidermis itself is one layer, uske par ek all layer bana dega, air ke which excess is greater than, okay? So it increases the thickness of the uppermost layer, ki puri proper thickness bada jayegi per epidermis itself and then the air, the layer of air that is above it. So this reduces the water vapor potential gradient. All right then, and they also have sunken stomata. Okay, so uh, if you look at uh, here, stomata at the base of the pit. Okay, so they are sunken. So stomata sunken in pits creates local humidity. Okay, it creates a local humidity it decreases exposure to air contents and decreases the water loss. So in these plants, okay, uh, for example, we'll discuss the example of marin grass. So they have this sunken stomata there. Then water storage, parts of these plants may be able to store water, such as the stems would be solen, right, of cactus, okay? So solen is stem of the cactus or the thick flesh leaves, the succulents. So they have these fleshy stems, again, because they would definitely be storing more water. Here, actually, um, uh, you can see uh, marin grass, right? Uh, so this is a photo microgram. So you can see, uh, you can actually have a look at these um, hair there, okay? So what are these doing? They would actually trap the water vapor, reducing the water potential gradient between the leaf and the air. Okay, then you can look at the outer epidermis. So it has a small but thick walled cells, okay? There's a thick cuticle, take or your outer epidermis may there is no stomata. So again, adaptations to conserve water. So thick walled cells, thick cuticle. Here we talked about okay, what would the hair do? Uh, they would trap the water vapor here in this case, reducing the water potential gradient between the leaf and the air. Right? Then this hinge, these hinge cells here that you're looking at, they lose their turgidity and they collapse in dry conditions, causing the leaf to roll up. So the leaves here, in this case, also rolled leaves. Okay, so you are not to use the term folded leaves. Of course, the term use can that is the leaves, uh, leaves are rolled. Okay, so leaves, uh, leaves rolled up because of this. They lose their turgidity and they collapse in dry conditions. And then if you look at the stomata, so these are in pits to trap the air with moisture close to the opening. So we have some kind of stomata here. Because I have a close look at the diagram, understand it. So this is another diagram that you can see. This is a light micrograph of transfer section of a rolled marim glass, grass leaf. So here you can look at, okay. So they've shown you the rolled leaf here, okay. Then leafy here. Sunken stomata and a vexi cuticle. So you can see. So here, these are the leafy hair that you can see, right? All 
All right then. So uh, just quickly, let's go through the list of zero fatty, uh, fatty adaptations. We've already gone through them one by one. But what is this thick waxy cuticle doing? It, a lot of water is lost through the cuticle. But if it is thick, it minimizes the water loss. And it is commonly found in evergreen trees and holly. Uh, sunken stomata, this reduces the air movement, creating a layer of moist air, reducing transpiration, right? Reduced number of stomata, reduced transpiration and gas exchange capabilities. Reduce leaves. So we saw that it will spines ki form mein honge, hai, ya thin needle like. So this reduces the surface area to volume ratio and water loss. Conifer leaves are thin needles. Then hairy leaves. The, le they, the hair create a layer of moist air, reducing transpiration. Marum grass have these hairs. Curl leaves or rolled leaves, right? Conifers, stomata in an environment of humid hair, reducing transpiration and water loss greatly. Succulents, they store water in specialized parenchyma tissue when water is in plentiful supply for when it is not. Cacti and aloes are example of succulents. Then leaf loss, losing leaves in long dry seasons allow for less water loss through transpiration. Right, so you can again like just uh, add these to your notes. Various adaptations by xerophytic cells to conserve water. And then you can have a look at this. Um, right, so you can see actually the succulent stems. So they will store water. Right, here you can look at cactus. So you can see okay, flattened leaves, very thick leaves here. Okay? And uh, that's about it then. <clears throat> 